are learning methods in psychology. These are the various methods which are used in psychology and we have to cover these methods as per our syllabus. In the last lesson, we understood about the observation method. Today, we learn about the survey method of research in psychology. Survey method is the method of study which is used to gather information about or opinions from a group of participants selected for study. So in survey method, if you look at this definition clearly, the method is used to gather information or opinions. So we can either use survey method to gather information about the people that we have chosen to study or their opinions about certain things. You must be aware of the survey, census survey, which is done by the government of India to assess the population, the, the number of people in the country and various other variables such as the economic uh, standard, living standard of people and many other things. Census is one example of a survey where the government is trying to gather information about the population, the people who live in India. Census is one example of using survey to gather information about the people whom we study. There could be another survey which asks the people chosen for study to give their opinions about certain things. For example, we may plan a survey to know the opinions of class 11 children in Dr. Virin Suru Public School Cant to give their opinions on the online teaching which is going on. So this would be an example of using survey method to ask opinions, to gather opinions of the people whom we have chosen for our study. So survey can be used to gather information about the group of people whom we study or to gather their opinions about certain thing or things which are of relevance to them. Now the question is, how does survey method gather information or opinions? What are the techniques which are used by the survey method to gather information or opinion? These techniques are interview, questionnaire and other techniques such as telephone survey, survey through SMS or an online survey these days. So interview is one technique which is used very commonly to gather information. We'll take up these techniques, these three techniques, interview, questionnaire and other techniques one by one. Coming to the first interview technique, interview technique is where two or more people engage in a purposeful talk with each other in which one person, generally called interviewer, asks the questions and the other person, called the interviewee or respondent, answers the questions. So in, in an interview situation, we have two people who are talking to each other with a purpose. So it is not a common day-to-day -day talk which we do in interview. When we talk in interview, when two people or two or more people talk to each other during an interview, they have a purpose. They have a certain agenda. They have a certain um, you know goal which they want to achieve. There is a certain purpose to that communication. They talk to each other on purpose. In this conversation between two or more people, which is called the interview, one person is called the interviewer, the one who asks questions. Generally, the interviewer asks the questions to the other person or persons. And the other person who responds to the questions is called the interviewee or respondent. So we have one interviewer and the other interviewee or respondent in an interview situation. Interviews can be of two types, structured interview or unstructured interview. A structured interview has a interview schedule or a list of questions prepared beforehand. The interviewer who is asking questions comes to the interview situation with a list of questions which is called a interview schedule. These questions have a specific sequence which is to be followed. So the sequence in the interview schedule, sequence of questions in the interview schedule has to be followed as it is. The researcher or the interviewer has no liberty 
to change the sequence of questions of the interview schedule. In some cases, the responses which the respondent can make to the questions asked by the interviewer are also specified. For example, the answers which the respondent can give to the questions asked by the interviewer may be in the form of yes or no or may be in the form of some specified responses which are given by the interviewer. So the response to the question which the respondent gives is not as per the choice but the respondent has to choose among the choices given to him or her by the interviewer. This is called a closed-ended question where the answer which you are giving to the question is specified in the question itself. The multiple choice questions which you may have attempted or which you are familiar with is an example of closed-ended questions. Multiple choice questions give you certain options to select from. You cannot answer the question as per your choice. You have to select from among the choices given in the question. You have to select one of the answers from those choices. This is called a closed-ended question where the response to the question is specified by the one who is asking questions. So in a structured interview, we have an interview schedule where the list of the questions is already determined. The sequence of questions to be asked in the interview is also determined and the responses in some cases are also determined in the questions. There is another kind of interview which is called the unstructured interview where the questions are not written in advance. So the interviewer has the liberty to raise as many questions or raise the kind of questions which the interviewer wants to know. Interviewer has the liberty to ask questions as per choice. Interviewer has the liberty to phrase the questions as per choice. So the language of the questions can be decided by the interviewer during the interview situation. There is no predetermined question. There is no predetermined language which the interviewer is following. It's the spontaneous response of the interviewer which determines the questions. And respondent too is free to answer questions as per choice. The respondent also is not given a limit of choices as in the structured interviews. We learned that there are certain questions which may have multiple choice questions. In unstructured interview, the answers to the questions are subjective. Just as you respond to subjective questions in your question paper, that is how you answer questions in an unstructured interview. The language of the answer the content of the answer depends on the respondent or the interviewee. So in an unstructured interview, questions are not written in or decided in advance. The interviewer has the liberty to ask questions as per choice. Interviewer has the liberty to phrase the questions as per choice. And the respondent too is free to answer questions as per choice. Interview situations can be of four types or there can be four combinations of participants in an interview. One, it can be individual to individual, where one individual is interviewing another individual. Two, it can be individual to group, where one individual is asking questions to a group of people. Three, it can be group to individual, where a group of people are interviewing a single individual. For example, when you go for a job interview, there is a panel of experts, panel of people who are interviewing you. This is an example of interview situation where a group of people is interviewing a certain individual. Interviews can also take the form of group interviewing a group. So there can be a group of people who are interviewing another group of people. So these are the four combination of participants which we can have in an interview situation. The second technique of gathering data in survey is using questionnaire. Questionnaire is a predetermined set of questions to which the respondent marks the answer on paper. So questionnaires are written list of questions to which the respondent or the participant has to respond. Questionnaires can be open-ended or closed-ended. Open-ended questionnaire is a questionnaire where respondent is free to write whatever answer she or he considers appropriate. Just as you give subjective answers to your questions, you know, 
these are the open ended questions where the answer is decided the length of the answer the content of the answer is decided by the respondent in closed ended questionnaires we have questions to which respondent can respond only in specific ways for example you may have certain choices in the questions to which the respondent has to respond mcqs or multiple choice questions are one such example which uses closed ended questions closed ended questions can have options available in many forms so the answer could be in in the form of yes or no true or false or multiple choices choosing one option from the available options or it can be in the form of rating scales like 3 point rating scale or 5 point rating scale a rating scale is a scale or dimension along which the responses are given the responses could be 3 number 5 7 9 for example if i ask you a question tell me how was your day today and the options are very good good bad worst so here i am giving you five options ranging from very good to worst this is called a five point scale you have to choose one response from this five point scale this is called a five point scale rating scale where you are rating your response according to the scale this is an example of a closed ended question so closed ended questions in a questionnaire can have yes or no true or false multiple choices or rating scales where the response has a rating scale or a dimension from very good to worst we can also use other techniques to gather data in a survey apart from interviews and questionnaires we can also use other methods these days we can use telephone there are telephone surveys where telephone is used to ask questions to people and gather information about them we can also use sms where the respondents can reply back with an sms or we can also use these days we have online surveys where we can make google forms and send it to people and gather information about them or their opinions about certain things so these are some other techniques which are used to gather data in a survey apart from interviews and questionnaires these techniques can also be used to gather data so let us now come to the evaluation of survey method let us learn the advantages and disadvantages of survey method the first advantage of survey method is that it enables the researcher to gather data from large number of people this is a very economical way of gathering data from a large number of people one questionnaire can be sent to many people to thousands of people and information can be gathered just as the government of india does a census they send uh, people with a questionnaire to our homes and these people ask us questions and keep ticking the responses in their uh, questionnaire through which they gather lot of information about respondents on a large scale so if done through online means or through telephone or through sms they can even gather data from a very large population very large number of people in a very short span of time so the second advantage of survey method is that it is very efficient in terms of time spent on data collection coming to disadvantages a major disadvantage of survey method is that the respondents may give inaccurate information if there is a questionnaire which the respondent is filling the respondent may not give a response which is correct and the researcher or the person who is conducting the survey has no means to check whether the responses given by respondents are correct or not the other drawback of survey method is social desirability this refers to the fact that people respond to questions or situations in ways which are considered to be socially appropriate so when asked certain questions in a questionnaire or an interview what people do is that they give answers which are socially desirable or which are considered to be correct or to be um, the answer by the society or by a large number of people around them so this is called social desirability when you try to answer to a question or when you try to respond in ways which are considered to be correct by 
the society at large or by a large number of people so you rather than giving a correct answer or the answer which applies to you which is which may be different from a large number of people around you you give answers which are socially desirable or acceptable by a large number of people or the majority of which you want to be a part this is called social desirability a uh, survey method has this drawback that people may give responses which are of a socially desirable nature rather than giving the correct answer which applies to them now let us um, come back to the list of methods that we have to cover in this chapter we have already covered observation in the last video today we have covered the survey method as well next video we are going to take up another method